Talk TV. And you may have heard that Steve Azar's One Mississippi was named our official state song, and now it's turned into a children's book. We're going to learn more about that today. Joining us by phone is Steve Azar. We've also got his author or illustrator, children's illustrator, Sarah Francis Hardy. And we've also got the publisher, Neil White, all with us. The gang is all here today on Good Things. But we're going to kick this off with Steve because this this is because of you, man. This is because of you and your song, One Mississippi. So when you were in your inspiration and thinking of how to write a song about Mississippi, did you ever imagine it could one day be a children's book? Never imagined. Hey, Rebecca, by the way, hey. thank you for having us on. I appreciate it. Uh, you no, know, you know, you, when, you're, when you're writing a song, uh, you are totally locked into that, and that's as far as you can ever imagine. You hope that a song will see the light of day. I always think about songs like our kids. You hope that, you know, you can raise them up, send them out there to the world, and they'll do good. <laughs> so in my mind, I see a song like that in my crazy mind. But, um, you know, I've traveled Mississippi quite a bit. I've written about Mississippi my whole life. I've always wanted to do just that and have projects that were just about that. And, uh, I mean, it was one of those things that just truly – uh, I got to tell you, it wrote itself. And I know I've, it's become a cliche for me to say that, but songs that you live and eventually are, oh, they're writing themselves all the time for years and years. And then when uh, I came full circle back to Mississippi, um, to me, it, it, I had nothing to do with it. I mean, it just, it was so fast. It came out. And it was just because of all the experiences and being inspired by this great state of ours that I love so much like all of us on the phone do, and know that, I know, personally know, if it wasn't for the state of Mississippi, I would not be doing what I'm doing today, which I'm so blessed and grateful. So, you know, this, it was a big deal, the song becoming the state song. Uh, Governor Bryant, back in the day, he, he, when he brought me in, he said, I would need an official bicentennial song, and, and he inspired me by saying, write something for the kids, and look where we are now. So it's pretty cool. Look where we are now, and that somehow you got connected with Sarah Francis. Sarah Francis, had you heard the One Mississippi song prior to maybe hearing that it could potentially be a project for you to illustrate? Um, hi, Rebecca. Thank you, again. thank you for having me. Um, you know, what's interesting is when Steve and I met, we didn't really meet in person, but we spoke on the phone when his CD uh is it My Mississippi Reunion? Steve, is that the yeah. name of your CD? Yeah. Uh, it, it won, it won um, the Music Award for the Mississippi Institute of Arts and Letters. And I was on that board, and so I had the honor of calling Steve to tell him that he won. So we had spoken, but we – and so, of course, I had heard the, I'd heard the song, and, and I'd heard it before then, too, but um, – we had a mutual friend uh, kind of hook us up when when Steve started thinking about turning this into a children's book and realized that we kind of knew each other, not really. Um, but that that's how it came about. Well, I think it was a perfect pairing, and Sarah uh, Francis, just looking through the book, Neil so uh, graciously brought me a copy so I could be able to see it here on Good Things while having this conversation with you all. You know, it sort of depicts, you know, what you see in your neighborhoods here and in your communities here in Mississippi. What was sort of your, I guess, you know, the song was already written, so you kind of had, you know, the words to play off of. Does the words in the book go directly with the lyrics, or was there any manipulation to make it a better? Better book to read, if that makes if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Hold on, I'm gonna interrupt. It better yeah. not have manipulated anything. <laughs> 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 manipulated was not the right word to choose, I love that Steve. Word. <laughs> Wrong word. I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I just wanted to add a little entertainment right there, real quick. Okay, yeah, every word was sacred. Trust every me. word was sacred. <laughs> every word was sacred. But you know, I, honestly, the best the best children's books. The the words and the illustrations really do, they complement each other, but they do something different, you know. So you don't, you, you know, you don't illustrate exactly what the lyrics say. You you add a little bit to them and you, 
you use them as a jumping off point. And so that was that was really the fun thing, honestly, about having the lyrics set in stone because it was a really fun creative exercise. You know, when when the lyrics talk about uh, Mississippi artists, I mean that was that was the lyrics. We have great Mississippi artists, and then I just got to fly. I got to choose the artists I wanted to represent and and have a lot of fun with that page and so it, it was it was pretty great and what was also nice steve was not um you know he didn't say it has to be done this way or a certain way i i really had creative freedom so it was it was a great it was really a great working experience you bring up a good hey, point guys. though go ahead steve oh i'm sorry no go I'm ahead sorry, i'm sorry well Staying in my lane, I've learned, you know, Sarah Francis is brilliant at what she does. Neil White is brilliant at what he does. He is also a great author. And, and I use that term great. I need to find another word. He's, he's actually prolific and prophetic and, and amazing. So Thank I you, wanted man. them to be able to do what they know how to do because I knew nothing about that. So uh, in, in my mind, it's almost like, Steve, you don't need to be back on the drums. You need to be singing and writing songs and playing guitar. Um, this was a different kind of band, and I needed to let them do what they do best and shine like they have so wonderfully. i got to tell you, I'm so grateful for these guys. Well, you brought up a good point, Sarah Francis, because even with music, and Steve, you may know this, if you just print out the lyrics to your favorite song and read them out loud, it hits different than if you're hearing it to the backdrop or within sort of the, the music. The music sort of brings it to life and, you know, puts emotion behind it and puts, you know, uh, gets your creative juices of just putting yourself into that song. So a good children's book or a good illustrator does the same thing. You know, you take two different illustrators, you're going to have two different kind of experiences with the same words. And so, you know, it does. It adds that sort of visual context to the song that I think now when you go back and listen, you have a better appreciation for it all sort of all the way around. Steve, who was the first person um, to sort of put a little pickle in your ear about it being a children's book? Was this your kind of idea or did somebody else give you the old elbow and say, hey, this could be a children's book, Steve? Well, I got I to tell you, my, my wife, the minute the song happened, she said, that's a children's book. Um, it, it, it was... And, and Governor Bryant said that he just told me, he said, don't walk out of here without telling me that this is going to be something that the kids would love and sing. And that's just the truth. So uh, very inspiring. Um, you know, when I started thinking about a curriculum in my mind and in the book, uh, started to come, you know, there were a lot of people that started saying this could be a children's book. I said, everybody's on the same page, but I don't necessarily see it. I would love it to be the case, but, I mean, once Sarah Francis started to go, I'm in, and I, I loved her work with Paint Me and all, all the great illustrations in her. She's got a very unique style uh, with her characters and her sweet little kids she creates. And once she did that and showed me the first draft and showed Neil, and I'll let Neil jump in, but the bottom line was, uh, I said, oh, my goodness. I mean, like, it, was, it, it came to life then because... A lot of times nothing's a reality until you have the assets in front of you and you have it visual. You know, I hate to say it, maybe the doubting Thomas, you know, but, but in a way, we've been in the creative business a long time, the three of us, and until you see it, it's not really there. So once it started to become fruition, it was real, you know, it, it totally hit me, and I was like, oh, this is a no-brainer. I mean, amazing. So I'm hopping around right now because i, I got to tell you, I've been moved by this experience. And by the uh, response from parents and kids, and I've gotten to witness them singing with me, Rebecca. All and when I go to school, I've had 300 kids at a time singing every word, and even now that's Mississippi. All the little, you know, the nuances that we had a hard time getting the lyric right in the book because I had them wrong online. Thanks to Neil and Sarah Francis, <laughs> uh, they got they got my lyrics straight. But the truth is, I've been moved so much by this whole experience, and I'm grateful, for sure. That has to be right up there with a crowd full of people holding up their cigarette lighters, or I guess now their iPhones, sort of singing to your tunes, right? To know that kids took the time to sort of learn your lyrics. Well, your lyrics did get published into a children's book, One Mississippi. We're going to get to your author, Neil White.
Spice. You're listening to the words of Steve, a- Steve Asar's One Mississippi. It is the official state song, and now it's officially a children's book. Yep, those words, nothing was manipulated, Steve, <laughs> in the making of the children's book, uh, One Mississippi. We're continuing our conversation with really the team here who made this a reality. Steve Azar wrote the wrote the lyrics, and then Sarah Francis brought it to life with illustration. And then Neil, you published it, so yeah. you brought it you brought it to the people. How did it get? How did this project get brought to you? Because I feel like it was first the song, then the illustrations, and then we've got to get it to the people. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, Steve and Sarah Francis were talking, and they were looking for a potential publisher. Sarah Francis and I have worked on another project together, and so they approached me. And, you know, I have never – I've I've done some contract children's book publishing, but uh, this is the first children's book that we've bought fully into. And, and I'll tell you, I'm so excited about it. It is – it's one of those, you know, magically circular things. Steve Azar's song is so inspiring and so good and moves the state forward in such a great way. It's just, a, you know, it, 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 the creativity and the, you know, the, the talent river flowed through him to get this song out. Then Sarah Francis took it to another level, and at every spread of this book, Features the kids dressed up like the famous singers from Mississippi, the famous famous artists from Mississippi, the famous uh, authors, that sort of thing. And so you've got these two incredibly uh, creative working artists in Mississippi coming together to create a book about creativity and inspiration in a state. I mean, it's just a perfect marriage. And so uh, I, it was a no brainer for me. I mean, this this book is going to be around for years and years. It's fun. Uh, on tours, uh, Steve can sing the song with kids, and Sarah Francis can read it and show them the illustrations. Uh, it's perfect for a kindergartner. It's perfect for an elementary school student with a lesson plan that Sarah Francis put together. Uh, I didn't think I could be excited about a children's book like this, but I am. Because it just has so many elements to it, and it can reach so many people, and it can hang out in school libraries as well as classrooms uh, for for a long time and be utilized. Now, Steve, I was listening to y'all's great conversation on your show in a Mississippi Minute. I heard you wrote this, or you said you wrote this pretty quickly, or it kind of wrote itself. Sarah Francis, you actually went and did a little research. You actually, you actually. <laughs> you didn't just whip these out, Sarah Francis? <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah Francis, the studious one who took her due diligence, what was it like um, or what, uh, to sort of go and sort of pick out verses or parts of the song and then do the homework behind like the history of it for our state? Well, well, first of all, I love I love what Neil said about how the, the lyrics move the state forward and the, the whole tone of the book is so positive. And that was that honestly was the most fun part of it for me, was doing all that research and learning so much about our state. I um, I, I just learned things that I, I never would have known about our state. I mean, our official state food is a butter cookie. I mean, who would have known that? Didn't um, know that. It's now blueberry right? is the fruit, but you probably had this printed. Yeah. Which I put in the teacher guide. The blueberry did not make it into yeah. the book in time. I think we had already gone to press. Mm. Some kids just voted that our official state fruit, like, last this, spring, yeah, this maybe. Pa- this past legislation, said, yeah, so. Yeah. You're forgiven. So, so, yeah, second so edition. I, just, that's what I was just thinking, yeah, maybe second, second edition. edition. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, right. You know, you know uh, when, go ahead and say it, Francis, because I wanted to say something about what you just said, but I'll, I won't forget. Wait, go ahead and say it. Well, I'm just going to say, when I was writing the song, to me, there was a, there, it, was, it was like throwing paint on the wall. So with every line came all of these potential visions and inspirations within the line itself. So... Um, when you say America's music birthplace, well, we could talk for seven years on that, you know, yes. and all the great artists and our kind of authors. I mean, it just lends itself to the conversation. And so, I, you know, I was thinking more vague, but big. Like, uh, everything was its own umbrella, and there was so much that was going to live underneath it. When you came with the book, and I saw that, and you started telling me, the, some questions and answers, and Gwen was doing the same thing. My Gwen on road trips, she was looking up, do you know this? Do you know this? I said, well, 
you know, in my mind, I was going to be four more verses, and you know, <laughs> the song would have been fifteen minutes long, and we would have surpassed Free Bird and American Pie as the longest <laughs> songs in history. But, but the truth is, I in my mind, I felt like let the umbrella, let each line encapsulate so much more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the way you said that. I, I like the description as an umbrella because it is songwriting and poetry and uh that that type of writing that's what you that's what you do it's supposed to be kind of open-ended and um well that's also good illustrations though san francis because you only got so many pages like you only got so much room on a page to put all maybe like the visuals you want in there too so you kind of have to provide that umbrella visual if you want to go with steve's term with it did you have a lot of uh or was there any uh, part of the song that created the most revisions until you got exactly what you wanted to convey what you felt he was trying to say um you know honestly every page was was a process of like revision and the hardest part was making the choices because just steve brought up musicians you know, well, who who do you include? Because I, I created seven characters, and I didn't want to put any adults in the book because it's a children. We ruin book everything. To... Yes, <laughs> we ruin right, everything. Right? <laughs> well, no, I she has a young BB. She's got a young with Lucille. She's got Robert Johnson. She's got Elvis. I mean, you, you know, Jimmy Rogers. Um, she's got these key folks who, are, you know, when you got the king of blues, the king of rock and roll, and the king of country all coming from how far away from each other, a few hours in a triangle, that's pretty crazy. And, Sarah Francis, you have Leontine Price in there, right? And Leontine Price. The queen of the opera, Tammy yeah. Wynette. Yeah, Tammy Wynette, yeah. 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 Where's Tammy Steve? Wynette. Where's Steve, Sarah Francis? <laughs> no, 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 enough of Steve. Well, I, I, I would rather you. be further manipulated. <laughs> well, I, 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 told, I told Steve when I was doing the musician I don't know if you remember this, Steve, I kind of sent you an, an email. Uh, hey, I think I'm only going to include musicians who have passed away so we don't make anybody angry and also with authors and um and artists although i leontine price is still alive i i, I yeah. just couldn't not include her but That's right. yeah. um that that was my way to kind of tell steve sorry man you're not gonna sorry steve you have to meet the good lord you had to go be with elvis to get immortalized as an illustration I, uh, you know no, no, no i didn't need that hey i do want to say something though let me tell you what the bright, one of the brightest lights of this entire thing has been. You know, when you're trying to have the state song and you, it's, it's repealing a song after 60 years, and you need legislature, and, and I watch legislature come together. I watch them, you know, decide is it the right thing. I watch that whole experience. Um, you know, I have so many, I'm, I respect so many of our politicians on both sides of the fence, and I'm grateful for all of them. And they know I'm about to run books over to Derek Simmons right now. Uh, he, he, they're friends of ours in Greenville. They're very supportive of our foundation down here. Him and his brother is our mayor. Um, you know, obviously, Philip Gunn and Becky Curry started the, wrote the bill. And there was just so many incredible people that came together we had to have, that we had to have. But when I put the video together of, I called, you know, all our friends from Morgan Freeman to Marty Stewart to Dorothy Moore to Bobby Rush to Cedric Burnside, the Chapel Heart now, to before he passed, Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, the list went on and on in our in the video. Uh, and they all said, we want to be a part of it. We want to sing. We want to do this. There was never a point in w where they, uh, they sent it to me immediately. So to see the creative forces of Mississippi and all of these genres and Cat Cora and Lance Bass and Marcus Dupree, and he had so many of his friends with him, and Jim, the Jim Gallagher family, everybody that loves Mississippi come together. I think it almost, that was the most important moment for me because my friends in the business of the arts came together and said, this is the song. So that video to me said it all, and so now this children's book, it's another level. So I keep getting new levels of, uh, I can't believe this. Because hit songs are nothing like this. This is this is way bigger than a hit song. This is sort of a forever thing to me. And it, it's just amazing to have such a great team. Team Super Talk. I mean, you guys, everybody's helped me through this process. 
And um, I, I'm just really forever grateful. Well, it starts, you know, sort of like that uh, pebble in the water. It's just the ripple effect. You have a good idea, and when it comes from a good place with good intentions, then other folks respond to it. And, you know, you were good. it was good for you to see to get out of the way and let Sarah Francis and Neil do, you know, their part of bringing One Mississippi to life. But I know there's an education component to this, so we'll wrap up our One Mississippi conversation coming up next. Radio station, you got to go to your local independent bookstore to pick up One Mississippi, at least for now. I think that's pretty cool that you guys decided to do that. We're wrapping up our conversation with a team that made the book possible that was inspired by Steve Azar's One Mississippi Official State Song. And we have Sarah Francis, who did the illustrations, and Neil White, who helped publish it or published it. And then Steve's still with us, too. But, Neil, I appreciate that, that you guys decided, hey, we're going to give the first several months, weeks, or whatever to our independent bookstores. Why is that so important for us to go buy our copy there? Well, you can buy it from the independent bookstores, or you can buy it directly from Nautilus Publishing at nautiluspublishing.com slash 1MS. But but um, we w- we want to support local independent booksellers. Uh, we want to give them the jump. Uh, we want to support them first. And so we typically, for these kind of books that are state-related, we delay putting them on the national online retailers until uh, a good bit later. Anything we can do to help keep bookstores in business, we want to do. When I think it's definitely a good thing. Okay, Sarah Francis, the other piece to this you took and ran with, Neil was telling me, is the educational component. Number one, I've got an 11-year-old today. She just turned 11 today, so I can't wait to get this home to her so she can read it to my 4-year-old, and or almost 4-year-old. Let me not rush it. She's still 3 for a few more weeks. But um, what? how did you think about it when you did the illustrations or just the educational pieces to make this good for all ages? Um. Well, again, there there were so many decisions I had to make. I had to choose um, you know, what went in the illustrations, and there was so much that I couldn't put in the illustrations. And also, um, I should add, Steve had the idea for making this an educational resource kind of all along when he came to me. I think he and Gwen had talked about trying to figure out a way to use it in schools, and I think Gwen has had said the same thing, just, there's so much um, in the lyrics. There's so much more. And so as I was researching, um, I had lots of notes about all the different, you know, Mississippi music, musicians, things like that. But also, uh, I mean, just for example, there's a page that talks about hurricanes and floods. And Oh, my goodness. I mean, you can just go take off from there, talk about weather. You can talk about hurricanes in Mississippi and and what the different hurricanes have been that have been the most destructive and how we handled it as a state. All all the history around the flood of 1927, um, even just a discussion about weather can come from that one page and those tiny little, you know, five lines of lyrics. So, that is that's how that came to be and then also since i've been in children's books that is just something that that's that's really my mindset anyway i always look at how how books can be used in schools and how they can be used to expand learning Well, if you've got teachers listening, I know it's car rider time for a lot. That's who tune in to good things or parents listening or homeschool um, parents. How can they get to educational resources or make it into or is there anything uh, deeper that can go with the book to bring it into the classroom? I have got the teacher guide available on my website, which is www.sfhardy.com. And if you, you can, from the landing page, there's a page that says to, to see the teacher guide, click here. So you can get right there. Um, and I've got it put up for anybody to access. Steve, did you learn anything new about your home state from all of Sarah Francis's studious um, d- uh, discoveries? <laughs> uh, she actually uh, taught me a lot. And I didn't know that Coca-Cola was first bottled in Vicksburg. Why would I not what? know that? <laughs> I didn't know it. I mean, I mean, I, I may have known it, but it just wasn't there. And that may have been something that I would have, you know. But the butter cookie to me is like, come on, that's our state cookie. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Y'all taught me that. I so. didn't know the butter cookie. I mean, I love a good butter cookie. So maybe, you know, it's, it's built in me. 
I'm signing books right now, by the way. I'm doing one to Nicole Boyd. I'm doing one to Willie Simmons. I'm, do- I'm just working here. It's part of the deal. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Everybody's it just, getting a book. It keep, just never stops. Keep uh, it up, Steve. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, it, it, obviously it just never stops. But, Neil, so you guys, this is your first one you went all sort of in on, which makes it sort of special. So you sit back and sort of see the response from folks. I mean, I'm sure you knew it was going to be a grand slam, but are you thinking, you know, Kudos to us for not bypassing this one. Oh, my gosh. Uh, listen, this, you know, this is not a sprint uh, like a lot of books are to try and get it sold in the four months that it's relevant. This book will be selling 10 years from now. But if anybody wants a uh, first edition, uh, we printed 3,000 of them, I would suggest you get out and uh, buy it right away because it is, it's going to be a great gift for Christmas. It's going to be a great gift for baby showers. It's going to be a great gift for uh, people who have a child. It's going to be a great gift for teachers. We're talking about looking for corporate sponsors to uh, print the teacher's guide and get them to all the teachers in the kindergarten, first, second grade level. Uh, We're looking to uh, work with some organizations to get uh, every school a copy of the book. And at some point, even uh, almost uh, every child in a certain age group in the public schools in Mississippi. So we've got a lot of work to do. But uh, the story, the illustrations, the educational component uh, and, the, and the, the fact that there is nothing negative about this project. It is all we are on the right show. It is all good. Uh, I think I, I think I think great things are going to happen. Sarah Francis, your seven characters, I've got to know, do they have names? Not that you have to share them all, but did, like in your head, do you, did you name them? Do they have? You know, they kind of, kind of, but, it, but they, they weren't named, they were named like Yoga Girl and uh, Hipster and that kind of thing. More like, more like little stereotypical names, you know, not, not name names. But I, I should name. I, I feel like I should name them. I, I would love to have. Um, I would love to have a set of coffee mugs or something with each each child, just because they're fun and they each have their own personality. I can see it. Like I was just thinking. I mean, this could be a cute little children's, um, uh, whether it be like little uh, TV show or movie or cartoon. I'd love to see them come to life. I think is what I'm just trying to say, because yeah, they look be like fun. they're having a heck of a good time uh, throughout the throughout the book. Neil mentioned that you put um, little hide and seek things within the book. Explain that for folks if they pick it up. What should they be looking for? Well, in every double spread, which, you know, would be if if the book were open and you could see the left and right page, there is a mockingbird, at least one mockingbird hidden. Oh, so okay. that is just something to look for. Sort of, well, see, so that's for my four-year-old, right? right. So my, exactly. my 11-year-old exactly. is getting frustrated because she's reading it, and the four or the three- and four-year-old wants to, you know, point and look. I can say, well, let's find the mockingbird while, exactly. while we're actually sort of Let reading. me just say this. And maybe I need my readers, but I... There's, Have you not found them? Steve, I've Steve. I've seen the seven-year-olds find the mockingbird a lot faster than me at times. <laughs> Did you ever play Where's Waldo growing up, Steve, or were you too busy learning your instruments? <laughs> I remember playing Operation and it scaring the heck out of me, which is why I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm going to have to sit down and do my due diligence and see if I can't if I can't find them all. But you're certain that they're all there, Sarah Francis. They they are there. A couple of them are tricky. A couple yeah. of them are tricky. A couple of them are tricky. Those are the ones that mm-hmm. stump me. But you know what? I got to say something. I've never seen in the music world people buy six records at a time. They only buy one or two at best. And I've been seeing six, six, five, five, and I'm going like. Man, this is a, a different kind of business because, you know, in the music world, people usually buy one copy and then they pirate it. Off <laughs> right, right. So this, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> Are you thinking through all of your, your records and thinking, man, what other song could be a children's book? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was thinking, I can't be me, to, or I don't have to be me till Monday. It's probably not one um, that you would want to turn into a children's book. But I think this was the perfect song, One Mississippi. We've got, we've got Pearl River Resort doing all adult-style entertainment like they do so well with Monday, and it's been a blast. 
So that song has found its home in Mississippi, and I'm grateful for that. Too. You have. You have. And as it says, you will bleed Mississippi until you die, Steve, at the end. You are definitely living truth to that. Um, so, Neil, one more time. We've got folks on the text line, Miss Pamela and Biloxi, wanting to know how do we get a copy of this book? Well, you can go to nautiluspublishing.com slash O-N-E-M-S, one miss, or you can pick them up at any bookstore uh, in Mississippi, uh, independent bookstore. And the closest one to you in Biloxi is next week, Past Chris Jan Books and Coffee Shop will have copies uh, in, in their in their possession. All righty, and that's a good excuse to get out and visit your local bookstores or your independent bookstores as well. They need you, and just like you need One Mississippi. I thank you all for your time today. Uh, Steve, give your hand a rest. I appreciate you you as well as you, Sarah Francis. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you all. All righty, you guys stick with us. we got a few more good things for you coming.